And there it is, the Rigol DS1054Z um, four-channel oscilloscope that was very generously donated through a sort of a, a impromptu crowdfunding effort by a group of people who are interested in seeing uh, more information from good old TK Labs. So I'm just going to run through a few of the um, of the functions and features of the scope. This isn't going to be a complete exploration, but uh, I will show you some things. So let's turn it on. And when it comes on, at first it takes so oh, 20 seconds or so for it to boot up uh, and uh, get established. And I have it set to turn on and start up in uh, default mode. So I, I'm giving it a signal from the um, the Object 13 board, and it starts up in default mode. And as as you can see, it's not really displaying anything sensible. So just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to press the auto button, and we'll let it choose its own display parameters for the waveforms. I only have two channels hooked up here, so there are the two channels displayed in the auto mode of the oscilloscope. Okay, and I think you can see that the traces look kind of thick. That's because in the acquire menu it's set to normal. So if I take that button and then set it using the multifunction knob down to the average mode press the button. The, all the knobs are also pressable. So now we're in an average mode, an average of two cycles. So let's pump that up to a reasonable number, say 128 cycles. So now it's taking 128 uh, refreshes of the waveform display and then averaging those and that gets rid of uh, a lot of noise, random noise, and glitches, so you can see that the trace is a little bit better defined now in average mode. Uh, let's just check utility, system, system info, and uh, as you can see, it comes up as an 1104Z because I've unlocked it already. Page down to the options menu, installed options, and uh, there they are. Okay, now this was just what came up with the default uh, power on of auto, and I actually have a fairly complicated setup stored in the memory. So let's go over here and press the storage button, and uh, storage. setups, load, local disk, select the local disk, select the setup file that I've got in there, and then load, and it takes a few seconds for it to actually load the setup file. There's a nice little progress bar. And once the setup file is loaded, you can see what we've got here. 
I have just, uh, just for the purposes of the demonstration, arbitrarily labeled the um, traces as amps and volts, even though they're not really representing that on the circuit I'm scoping. And then a math trace with J for joules. The math is the integral of channel 1 times channel 2. So this would be the integral of a power trace, which would give us an energy value. And the scope came up in the zoom mode. This, uh, let's see here, this whole width here is the depth of the memory, the whole memory, and then the black portion is the portion that we've actually zoomed in on uh, to view that little glitch there. It's very convenient to be able to um, store a complicated setup like this. It took several minutes to set this uh, to, to actually make this set up with the labels and set up the math trace and all that. Now it's very neat because just by pushing the horizontal um, scale button you can shift between this regular display mode and the zoom mode and by turning the button in the zoom mode you can zoom in on those precise details of your waveform trace. And of course you can use the uh, the horizontal position button to move that window around on your waveform. Okay, so let's go back to this view here. Let's go to the measure menu and the clear button. And there's no items listed in there. So let's go to measure and over to the horizontal menu on the channel one. Let's get a frequency measurement in there. You can see it comes up in a small font down there. So now let's go let's go to the measure menu again and go to the next page where we have font size normal and let's select a large font there or even extra large, but let's just go for large for now. And now you can see that that frequency came up down there in a little larger font. And I also have the hardware frequency counter going, which operates on the entire memory buffer, whereas this measurement frequency operates only on the window display. So now let's go to the utility menu and scroll down, oh sorry, scroll up system, power set, last. So now when I turn the power on it will retain the last setup that I've put into it. And let's just test that by turning it off for a moment and then turn it back on and once again it takes a few seconds for it to boot up and sure enough it came back on with the setup, most of it, that we had when we turned it off. It did not put us back to the large font on that frequency display though.
that's easy enough. We can get back to that by hitting the measure menu, uh, scrolling down till we see the font size, and selecting large or even extra large again. And now we have the extra large font back on that measurement. And let's see if we uh, select channel 1 again and go to a, let's just get the period there. So now we have a period measurement as well. And we go to the zoom. And those, since those guys are operating only on this window, now they're uh, starred out because you obviously can't get a period or a frequency from just that portion of a waveform. But they're also blocking the view of that waveform. So we can go again to the measurement menu, go to clear, and delete all items. And that removes those guys. So now you can see the full extent of that waveform picture there. And zoom right in again to see the detail of that little glitch. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for now. Thank you for watching. There will be uh, more as I figure out more of the scope.